Hey guys, welcome into the Poker Reborn channel. Today I'm going to be giving you my fencer build guide. It is fantastic. This build is so freaking viable to make your freaking knickers twist and fall off. Look at him. Here he comes right now. Boom! Right in the screen like that. Gosh, I love special effects. Here's a firework too. Pow. Okay, so the deal pretty much is I have created this, this fencer and I want to give people a guide on how to effectively make him through all stages of the game. Uh, you know, from mid game all the way to the ultra late game. This guy is going to wreck house and you'll see that in the footage coming up right now. If you do enjoy this stuff, this content, please hit the like, subscribe, more like this coming and uh, so stay tuned for that. Without further ado though, let's check out the fencer. All right guys, let's check out the fencer and what makes him tick. When we look at the fencer, what we're ultimately looking for is really high initiative. The number one stat is in initiative. Maybe people would say otherwise because melee you need to be able to hit something. But when we're talking about the damage, the pure damage that you're going to produce with the fencing sword, it is highly dictated by the initiative. So with that being said, you can't go with a brother that has really heavy armor because if you do, it ends up taking out number one nimble and it also starts taking out your initiative. So you don't want to do that. That's a big no-no for those who have never done a nimble build. Now nimble builds are actually pretty easy to make. It all starts with the brother that you pick up. So my suggestion when you pick up brothers, if you want to start with already that buffer in initiative, go with rat catchers, go with thieves, and then my favorite, which is assassin. Now there's of course other backgrounds that have higher initiative as well. I'm not discounting them, but those ones automatically have higher initiative in the first place. The next thing you're gonna wanna look for, being that we talk so much about initiative already, is stars in initiative. You end up finding stars in initiative that's a great way to boost everything out else. Um, the next thing you wanna look for would be melee skill. Now yes, defense is very important very very important any kind of build defense is very important i'm not trying to downplay that but to be able to pack a punch with this thing and not whiff on a on a normal lunge ability you need to be able to hit your target so higher melee is great as you can see i i mean i picked a brother who didn't have stars in hit points you didn't have stars in melee but because he rolled decently on melee i kept going that route and we'll talk about that in a second the very next thing you need to look for is like hit point well either of these these two are pretty much about on par for me uh the hit points you want to have as high as you can because of nimble the 40 percent reduction to any hit coming incoming or 60 percent reduction rather uh, negated off of a hit on you. You're only receiving 40% damage. That's really important. The higher the hit points, the better you are, the less injuries you're gonna take because of the thresholds that, that come from, from taking hits. And then of course, like I was just saying, these two are on par having high melee defense because why you don't wanna get hit, that's why. So that is the things that you need to look at for starters. As you can see, I was able to pump this boy up to 152. The beauty of this is, when we start putting on the armor and everything, this is how he should look. If you notice, his initiative didn't drop that much. And the reason is because of this pelt. In fact, I think we might have we might have broken it. No, we just dropped one point. But the reason is because of this pelt. Get the hyena pelts, as you can see. It gives you a plus 15 initiative. It also gives you um, 15 extra hit points on, or durability on your armor. So definitely go that route. It just boosts this initiative. You, I'd, I'd recommend that for anything. Worst case scenario, you could always go with the gladiator harness. It's a really good one, but you can see how far we dropped. But this thing only, already has a technical attachment to it. So to add the pelt would be kind of pointless. Nonetheless, there's different ways that you can build them up. This is how I suggest doing it. With a higher initiative, let's look at the next portion, the damage. So slash ability stays the same, you get the 10% uh, ch chance to hit because it's a sword, and of course I have the mastery, which we'll talk about in a second. But then there's lunge. Lunge is the bread and butter of this build. Effectively, it is footwork. You're allowed to leave a zone of control to attack somebody else and fall into another zone of control. Now this means that it's really highly fatigue intensive. You can see 19 fatigue, again, mastery. Without, a ma without the sword mastery, it's 25. And again, we'll talk about it more in a second. But I want you to see is the damage increase at 151. Most people would say this just isn't very good. 
but I can lunge at two different enemies and if they are squishy enemies, they could be insta-kills. My ignoring armor chance is up to 53. One shot. 53. That's dirty. That is dirty, ignoring armor. And I think it's very underrated with this weapon and there's other things that you can even boost all this potential. But uh, yeah, that's why you want high initiative, that's why we want to keep the melee where it is, and then of course melee skill. Now let's get into the perks. Now, I would not build, I would never make this build unless I had dodge. Do you need relentless? I'm not going to put the stamp of need on it, but definitely, definitely worthy of a pickup. <laughs> I would definitely go this route, I don't know, I don't know for myself that I would that I would go other like in a different direction from Relentless, but uh, yeah, they they are not. They, I don't want to. They're, they're handcuffed for the most part. They are incredible perks to go together. When I start my brothers out, especially ones that have this much promise, I'll go with Student to give them that 20% boost on everything. Uh, that's up to you guys. If you don't want to go that route, you can always just continue with Colossus. Get that health up as far as you can get it for starters. The next one, you could go with Gifted. If you don't want to go Gifted, you don't have to. I mean, if, if I didn't go Gifted, I would have had 29 melee defense. I would have had 90, uh, 92 melee skill. And I think I added either I went hit points or I went fatigue. Um, if you want my honest opinion on fatigue, there's two ways to build out fatigue. And I'll kind of put that on the screen. But you either go with around 80 or you go with 91 or, or in the 90s or higher. If you go with higher, you're stretching, you're stretching the initiative drop when you're getting when you're guzzling fatigue. And that does affect your your dodge ability. The reason I went higher on my fatigue is because I didn't pick recover. Some people may say, that's insane, Puggo. Why wouldn't you go recover? Uh, especially when you're lunging all the time. Again, I'm going to show you footage and I'm going to prove to you that there is serious viability with dodge, with relentless, and even being completely fatigued out, still having 13 melee and range defense being tacked on top of this which in my opinion is pretty dang sweet uh, and, and plus your shots and so on. We'll go over that again in a second. So you don't exactly need gifted. You could switch out gifted. You could give it to cover. You could go pathfinder, making it even more or less fatigue buildup as you're moving along. Leveling up is super easy with this, with this brother. You could go with crippling strikes. Now I know people, the, the ultra late game brother, people that play this game, they're going to be like, that's not viable. That's your. That's fine. That's you. But uh, I know that about. I think it's like 70% of the community of Battle Brothers only plays through crises. So if you only play through crises and you don't play against things that can't take injuries, Crippling Strikes is gorgeous because of the ignoring armor and the pure damage that you do with this weapon. The next thing that you could end up doing is you could end up going with uh, Killing Frenzy. I know a lot of people would be like, why not Killing Frenzy? Um, I don't have a reason not to. I mean, I, I just this this is a very unique build, and there's many different ways that you can go about this. I went with quick hands because usually I'll put a, uh, an arming sword here, so I can change it up a little bit, use repost if I'm in a, sit, a sticky situation. Uh, again, you could you could scrap both of these perks, and you'd be fine to use them wherever else. Another one that you could go with is berserk, but I highly suggest if you go berserk, you're talking about a lot of fatigue buildup. And that fatigue would also, that's where I would go with recover. Because you're lunging, you're lunging again, and if you kill somebody, you can lunge a third time. That's 75 fatigue buildup if you do not have the mastery. Now, if you're not familiar with the mastery, here's 25% fatigue buildup. <laughs> and, of course, it lowers the thresholds for the ability gash, which doesn't count for this. But still, um, it's the main reason you do this is for the fatigue. So you're going from 25 to 19. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty. So one, if you lunge one time, you're only blowing four fatigue because every round that you pass, you get 15 fatigue back. So hopefully that makes more sense. Now, here's the other thing. Why would I go footwork? We have so much fatigue buildup right here. Why footwork? Well, I use footwork to get out of sticky situations, and it's not hard to use that even though... This, is a this may look like a fatigue intensive build here. Y you'd be surprised how you can get into better scenarios. Like 
getting out and then doing a lunge ability in a different direction, killing an archer, killing a pole arm is huge as well. And I'll show you, I'll kind of mix in some of the videos so you can see that. Of course we have nimble, uh, pretty self-explanatory. We need that and finally uh, duelist and uh, overwhelm. You don't have to have overwhelm. I like overwhelm because every single turn with the sword mastery to do a sink a symbol or a simple slash ability it takes 18 fatigue or i'm sorry 18 16 fatigue so slash slash you're you're if you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody usually that's the case because of your ability to jump in and out of a con of combat with lunge you can debuff the person multiple times and that allows you not to get hit. And I mean, pretty much you're boosting your defense even higher. Um, so with that being said, the only other thing I can really think of is, uh, you, there's just, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. You can go with, res I mean, some people might not agree with this, but you could, could go with resilient. Way to turn, uh, way to turn if you get knocked out the very next, like when it comes back to your turn order, you come back and in the very next round, you start at the, the top end of initiative if you're in a bad scenario, I, I don't know. Or if you're bleeding, of course, because of nibble builds. I don't know if I'd go that route, but that's, there's an option there. All right, so the three things I want you to focus on when you're using this build. Number one, take on those weaker units, kill them, get them discarded. I'm talking about the pole arms, I'm talking about the, the archers, I'm talking about the the even the raiders at a point you just like one shot raiders which is really cool but just taking those guys out getting rid of the nuisance that is out there the next thing you're going to want to do is get the finishing blow the finishing blow is going to be against uh, orc warriors it's going to be against which just sounds crazy but you can actually one after they've been blocked down a little bit use him to jump in and finish the battle uh, as you saw earlier uh, taking on chosen it does a great job against chosen putting a puncture in them going to another one and then finally my final thing for you guys is to go after the priority targets as well the the ones in the back the the necromancers you you want to go after the goblin shamans it sounds crazy but it's i mean especially against goblins it's one shots every single time only 45 health or 40 health for goblins you you just obliterate goblins one at a time and their morale checks are so poor that you just eat them alive now finally the pros and cons to this build the pros are simply this you have a great output of damage on uh, the the weaker units you can easily do hit and run tactics and also be able to pull uh, like pull their formations in an odd it really an oddity way and and just being able to eliminate a few of the backliners is such a good thing now the cons is and this is the biggest one the surrounding if you get surrounded you need to get in there and help them uh, you, I had a video earlier about the serpents and stuff I'm jumping from one to another luckily I didn't get pulled in it can happen and it can be devastating just be aware of your surrounding so that you have an exit out even if it looks dire like man they're gonna surround me completely a lot of times the enemy will see the bigger threat of everybody and not just one person finally don't be afraid to get away like just get away from everything because when when the crap hits the fan it can be really dangerous um, for your brother because of bleed for instance or other ailing effects that can slow you down especially when you're not using recovery uh, I haven't had that big of an issue yet but I guarantee there's a, there's some opportunity for that so so that's the guide done today guys hopefully you did enjoy this if you did like it hit that like button subscribe to the channel be a part of the community discord in the link below I do a puggle round table you guys have an opportunity to be a part of my perk guide and other uh, other guides on the channel that will be coming forward just like this. So thanks again guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye